Okay. Here's the question I keep getting asked over and over and over again. Fuji X-T2 versus an Icon D500. I got two of these and I got two of these. I've used the bejesus out of both. Let's keep it short and simple. What is the serious differences between these two cameras? Where does an Icon steamroll the Fuji uh, uh, X-T2? First and foremost, let's talk about not the camera, but the ecosystem. There is no hardcore sports action wildlife glass for the Fuji X-T2. Most people don't care about that. Someone's going like, yeah, you know, there's a 100 or 400 uh, millimeter of Fuji. No. No, I'm talking about some really hardcore serious. It's like, well, I can do, you know, sports action and no. You, you, you can, but not really. No, that's, you know. It is a nice lens. I mean, I've used it a few times. I, I'm still even thinking about buying it while it's on sale. But, you know, I've got some hardcore, enormous glass for the Nikon D500. So that's what exists the Nikon D500 that the Fuji doesn't have. So that is the ecosystem that is outside the camera itself. Let's get down to brass tacks. Someone said, well, the D500 is better. And other people go, no, the Fuji X-T2 is better. Well, they're both right. A lot of people don't care about that serious hardcore glass. I mean, really hardcore, big-ass honking glass. Big, big glass. Where does the D500 um, outperform the X-T2? Hands down, no, or there's just no damn debate. It's not my opinion, not my belief, not my conviction. It's just a hardcore damn fact. You're going to shoot late night or a club or, or late night on the street, you know, some sort of event late in the evening or something like that. The high ISO performance on the uh, Nikon D500 will steamroll the dog piss out of the Fuji X-T2. There is nobody on this earth with two brain cells that is going to step to what I just said about that. It's just an undeniable hardcore fact. Period. Undeniable. Even at ISO 6400. Even at ISO 12000. ISO 40000. ISO is applied gain, by the way, okay? It's signal interpretation. I mean, a camera is not a sensor. A digital camera is not a sensor. It's AD converters, it's SNR firmware, a lot of other things. You could do noise reduction software in post on either camera, any digital camera. But straight out of camera, high ISO performance on D500, steamrolls the Fuji X-T2, flat out, bar none. Also the buffer, okay? I don't care how fast the SD cards you stick in the Fuji X-T2, it doesn't even step to a slow-ass XQD, which I don't recommend buying a slow-ass XQD card like uh, uh, version 1, but nothing, nothing. Now, the second card slot on the Nikon D500 is uh, an SD card, but nothing is going to step to an SD card. I mean, uh, the XQD card, invented by Sony, by the way. <laughs> don't recommend buying their cards, however. These are actually better cards than Lexar. I recommend getting the 2933s, the 32 gigs. When you get the 64 gig, that's fine. These are like 50 bucks. They're kind of pricey, but not really. Um, the buffer on the D500 will steamroll the dog piss out of the Fuji. Just un, there's just no question about it. It will, yeah, but there's, you know, it's rocking two SD cards. It doesn't have an XQD card in it. Okay, so high ISO performance and buffer. D500 will steamroll the X-T2. There is absolutely no debate about it. That is it. There is no perfect camera. There never will be. I was the first person on YouTube making tons of videos on the D500 when it came out. Same with the X-T2. Both of these are incredible. I said that the D500 would be a legendary camera. Everybody said it was full of crap. Uh, but I've been completely vindicated 100 damn percent. Now, everything I see on the web is like, well, how does so-and-so camera compare to the D500? How does this compare to the D500? How does that compare to the D500's eyes? The D500 has become the new base criteria. It has. I mean, I just I see that everywhere. Well, how does this compare to the D500? It's like, when everything is compared to the D500, then what you have is a legendary camera. Everybody said, oh, no, it's a DX camera. It doesn't even have a pop-up flash. Ah, oh, professional, legendary DX camera. You so crazy, girl. I'm like, no, just wait, wait and see. And, you know, totally vindicated. Thank you so much. I might read my hand up. Pat, pat on the back, right? No one else is going to do it. <laughs> uh, did testing. I proved that the autofocus, both of them are insanely fast. All things being equal, which they never are, because autofocus is not merely camera side, it is also lens side. The T-stop of the lens, because if you didn't reach enough light, then contrast uh, or phase detect can't work properly, or as good. It can't work properly. It can't work as good. Also, the, uh, the type of motors that are in the lens. So autofocus acquisition is not merely camera side. 
All things being equal, which they never are, the Fuji does edge out the Nikon D500 on autofocus tracking. It does. Then again, it depends. You know, if I, I throw the 27 millimeter pancake on this on this camera, this camera or the 35 millimeter one. This camera is slower than. Yeah, this camera sucks. But that's not the camera. That's the lens. You throw those lenses on this camera. That camera is, you know, it's like a constipated three-toed sloth. <laughs> it just is <laughs> constipated sloth. That's a good mental mental image right there, isn't it? So that's the lowdown on the D500 and the X-T2. If you're someone that's a night crawler and you're, uh, you know, you're shooting a lot of high ISO stuff or you need the insane crazy ass buffer, um, the D500 is it. High ISO performance and, uh, and buffer the D500 steamrolls the X-T2. Flat out. Both of them are really, really awesome winners. Really, really good winners. 2016 has seen the introduction of these two cameras, which are going to be pace setters for quite a long while. They are. Fuji is not like another camera company, Sony, that will remain unnamed, Sony, that, uh, you know, drops a new uh, camera every six months, Sony. You know, when they make something like this, they support it, and they stick by it, and they made it to last for a significant period of time, unlike another unnamed camera company, Sony. <laughs> uh, yeah. Happy holidays! If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. I'm here to give reliable, logical, intelligent, accurate information based upon objective criteria and extensive testing. Okay. I don't know what you think I'm doing when I'm not off this camera, but I'm testing and thinking and testing. You know, you can think whatever you want about me, all right? And that's fine. I know what I look like. I know I don't have the, the personality of like, uh, who's that crazy chick that was on TV? Uh, I don't know, Kelly Ripper or something like that. You know, like, hi, everybody, I love you. Smiles, oh my God, I'm so pretty. Everybody love me, you know. I don't have that personality. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Bye.